Hey, what's up everyone? This is Aaron from Studio 3B. Today I want to talk to you about my 2012 MacBook Pro. It was given to me by a family member and I'm just super grateful. It was chucked up as useless and the guys at the Apple store were like, yeah, this thing has problems and you just need to buy a new one. And he decided to give it to me, which I'm super grateful for. It had a very slow boot time. It had Mac OS Catalina on it, which was obsolete, very outdated at least. And the thing is that I just, I've always wanted a MacBook. I've always wanted to have the niceness of the Apple hardware as well as the operating system that just ran symbiotically with it. And I'm just happy to have this laptop and you know the keyboard is super nice I don't have a lot of mistypes when I'm using it it just feels fluid the trackpad is very smooth it feels like an, a magic trackpad all the gestures work and everything like that so it came with Mac OS Catalina it came with a very slow hard drive and it came with 12 gigs of RAM and I don't even know what they were two different brands in there so I did upgrade just about everything that you can upgrade in here besides the screen I don't have the retina screen this is the uh, regular 15 inch screen, 15. I think it's uh, this laptop is 15.4 inches or something, but this is a great year upgradeability wise, nothing soldered to the motherboard like it is nowadays. So you can get in there and do stuff. So uh, just to show you first what I ended up doing when I found out that it would barely boot within a couple minutes, it took forever to boot. So I, um, I uh, turned this thing around and I was curious to know how it would look inside of here. And so I thought it would be very difficult to pry open this case as laptops typically are very hard. I feel like I'm gonna break it most of the time. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 screws, little screws. You take them off and boom, you have your laptop and this thing needs to be dusted. There's the, uh, there's the insides and it turns out that all this stuff is actually upgradable. The battery was serviceable. It was lasting only a couple of hours. So I did replace the battery for about 35 bucks on Amazon. I'll send a link in the description below and I upgraded the RAM. Uh, I just replaced both modules with two eight gigabyte, so up to 16 gigs total memory. I used OWC. I heard those were a good brand for Mac. So it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, I replaced them both with the same brand. So the other ones were just off brand. So I didn't know if it would work better with just the same RAMs for both eight gigabyte slots. And I upgraded the hard drive to an SSD. So this is a Samsung Evo. It's a one terabyte. So the uh, stock drive was a spinning platter with like 500 gigs. Um, so I did double in size also. So uh, then I put an extra hard drive in the, the super optical drive that comes with the laptop so you don't get the anymore when you start the laptop and it ha just gives me extra storage. I put a 250 gig disc in there and I just store my virtual machines on there, my, my parallels. I just try to give it a little more breathing room from the operating system when I'm running Windows or any VMs I just put on there or I, any other use I would have for a second disc. I thought it would be good to install this. So I bought this caddy online. It's an external hard disk caddy. I had an external hard disk caddy from my servers, my Dell servers, and I did put it in here. A very, very similar structure to this, but, and it did fit. I was able to get it in here for a couple days, but I worked with it. But the height of it was just a little too high. It had an extra couple millimeters on it. Like I'd say like almost even a half a centimeter. And it was very hard to close the back of the laptop case. I ended up just ordering one. It was like 10 or $11 on Amazon. I don't remember the exact price, but I ordered one that's designed for MacBooks. And it's just a lower profile, same exact shape and size, just a lower profile. So the cover can go on a lot smoother and not stress out the structure of the screws and the screw holes and everything like I had it before. So that's the right caddy. Um, like I said, RAM, battery, and hard disk. I cleaned it up. I sprayed it off just now with a little bit of, little bit of air dusters that, that I have just to get some of this dust off. It's not perfect, but this is, uh, these are the fans. And it comes with an NVIDIA graphics card. I, I'm not sure which one of these. I don't, I don't know if these are the graphics card fans or just the CPU fans. I don't know. But the, there's an NVIDIA graphics card in here. And it also has onboard graphics and it kind of switches up depending on performance and battery life and things. I don't know the exact algorithm. So let me put the cover back on, at least partially. Okay. Let's boot this thing up and just show you. There's the lovely boot chime. 
And I did install Sonoma on here. So that's not supported by Apple to have a 2012 MacBook Pro run Sonoma. Some things wouldn't be compatible like the Wi-Fi and, and other things like that. But I did use OpenCore Legacy Patcher and that worked like perfectly. So it boots up pretty quick and then it, then it has this little delay after you log in and it just loads the operating system after you log in. All right, boom, we're logged in. And I just wanted to say that uh, this is a uh, Sonoma. I was, as I was saying, and this is open court legacy patcher. I'm making this run on MacBook Pro 2012. It's a mid 2012. So, so uh, all the things work with legacy patcher. I've got the Wi-Fi working, the graphics working pretty smooth and all the updated software programs are in here. So that's pretty good. I do have parallels runs perfectly. There's a little glitch sometimes actually with the graphics. If I'm getting intense with some of the applications and using up a lot of memory, the graphics do get a little glitchy. So I wouldn't recommend this laptop for games. I also tried 4K video editing. That did not go so smoothly even with proxy media. I was using Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve. So that was a little rough, but, but 1080p seemed to be working just fine. So you know, some light video editing is definitely doable here. So apparently Parallels doesn't seem to be working with my screen sharing program, but it does work fairly well without OBS running. Uh, I do have the memory, free memory app here. So you can see I do have 16 gigs available, uh, 10 available here, 16 gigs in total. What else is good on here? So, you know, you can remote desktop into things, even if you want more Windows options that way. Terminal is really nice to do SSH into things and browser works just fine. So, you know, all the basic apps are working great, good for productivity, good for uh, maybe if you're in college, it would be good or just want to putz around the office. Again, if you need to do heavy duty editing and all that other stuff, get a full size uh, Hackintosh and, and do it that way. Or uh, actually, if you can afford it, get a Mac Pro or a Mac mini would be good. But uh, I just want to show off this laptop and say how grateful I am. And thank you very much for watching. Please like this video. And if you have any comments on uh, this laptop or any other laptop you're using from Apple or any other company, please leave a comment below. Tell me what's your preferred method for using uh, Mac OS, for example. Do you hack and touch a laptop or do you use Apple products? So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more audio and technology content.